top fade. Good evening, and thank you as ever for tuning in to the Lock In Pub Quiz. As ever, you can follow us and play along at the Lock In Pub Quiz on Twitter and Instagram. I'm your host, Ivo Graham. This is our fifth episode, and I'm excited to say it's not just a comedian special, it is an Edinburgh Comedy Award winner's special. What a privilege. The first of our three contestants is actor and comedian Roisin Conaty. Hello, Roisin. Hello, Ivo. Thank you very much for joining us, Roisin. You told me beforehand that this was your first quiz of the lockdown, which at week 10 seems insane. Yes, it's been really hard avoiding them, but I've managed to avoid them, and it's been really... I've been saving myself. I'm fresh, pumped, ready to ready for action. I like that logic. Having done nothing of something <laughs> means that you are honed and ready to go. Well, we'll see if that pays off when it comes to your opponents. The first of whom is comedian and poet Tim Key. Hello, Tim. Hello, Ivo. Thank you very much for joining us, Tim. I'm going to throw a few names at you quickly, and I want you to tell me what links these names. Michael Rosen, Julia Bradbury. Can I, can I buzz in early? You can buzz in immediately. Uh, those are people who've been on my quiz show 10 years ago. Uh, that, <laughs> that's not true. It was Michael Those Rosen. are people who came on my quiz show 10 years ago when what? I was your age. <laughs> I'm not sure if I believe that, but it certainly would rule well, what's out the, the third ne- person? The third person was going to be Adam Lalana, Tim. No, not Lalana. He's not been on. <laughs> A schoolboy, Adam Lalana, popping on weenie dancers just for a bit of PR. Um, I can tell you what links them, Tim, or do you want to have another guest without I want another guest. Hang on, Julia Bradbury, Michael Rosen and Adam Lalana. It's only a photocopy, of course, and it's now covered in ticks, crosses, doodles and wine. I am, of course, Tim, reading from an independent article you wrote in 2014 about how you would have smashed a pub quiz based purely on a sheet you found in a pub. It was very enjoyable. We've moved now to our third contestant, another Edinburgh Comedy Award winner with, I believe, also a nifty side hustle in uh, journalism, John Robbins. Hello, John. Hi. Lovely to see you behind that trademark Mercury mask. Um, How are you doing? Very well, thank you, John. How many of your Metro columns do you think you'll be able to recall uh, in 2026? Oh. Oh, I'd say a fair old whack. I'd hope so too, but it's been a bit of a cautionary tale. Roisin, are you a right. fan of general knowledge? The good, the good bits. Right. Well, let's hope. I like the nice bit. stories, the good stuff. You know, when it gets a bit like, oh, bad things happen. Not into it. That's interesting. Mm. I would say most of it would uh, tonight count as good bits, uh, but uh, I'll, I'll try and include any warnings before any particularly problematic questions. Our first question <laughs> in our first round, which is general knowledge, and I can tell you, Roisin, even in the current climate, and I don't say that as a, as a bad thing, it's a good thing, I don't think you need a trigger warning for a question about Tetris. How many different shapes of Tetramino are there in the traditional version of the game Tetris? All you need here is a, a single digit. I've already actually provided quite a hefty clue there. Uh, We've narrowed it down to anywhere between zero and nine tetraminos. Our second question, and Roisin, this one actually does involve, uh, uh, it involves... I don't really need, like, I'm okay, you don't really have to... (laughs) I won't do every single question throughout the week, but it's only because I think this one is is, is noteworthy. Okay. It's about uh, self-mutilation, as every question too should be. Question two, in December 1888, the Dutch painter Vincent van Gogh cut off which of his ears? Not, I should say, in its entirety. As I'm looking at him or as he's looking at me? As he's looking at you. Why is he looking at you? No, come on. (laughs) Uh, Sorry, it's... And this came up in my own personal risk assessment and I thought, everyone's going to know what your left ear is. It's it's the one on your... (laughs) Is it his left ear? All right, all right. (laughs) Um, So having stumbled a little bit there, told off for Rasheen by running too far with an uh, (laughs) in-joke, told off by Tim and John for being vague in a question and then accidentally betraying an answer, we'll have to hope that question three goes a bit better. That question is, which mammal, and I'm not going to find myself saying it in about 20 seconds' time, which mammal has the longest gestation period? You know, for all the mischief in the world, 
there's no problem with that question. I just got a text from uh, my mortgage provider. My mortgage has been approved. That's really fantastic. Hey, hey, just, hey. just what you needed today, actually. What a, what a moment out. to capture on screen. That's really, really fantastic. Nice. I just got a text from Laura Laverne. Did you? Has she approved Yay! your mortgage? <laughs> A lot of pressure on Roisin now. Genuine great news, John. Fantastic. I haven't covered myself in glory there. I tried to. I tried to shine the light on myself. <laughs> what with the with the with, with the Laverne news? Yeah, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have brought the Laverne news up there. How many years have you been waiting for this mortgage to be approved, John? Oh, it's just a it's a remortgage. Oh right. Which in this current climate is more difficult than you'd think. Mm, second reference to the current climate. Uh, you think it's easy to get text back from Laura Laverne in the current climate? <laughs> <laughs> question four who was the last man and i think this is quite a fun question actually who was the last man not in the traditional big four brackets federer and adal djokovic murray to win a wimbledon singles title I wow think, that's a good one i think it is quite a fun question actually and i've condescended you all by uh, including who the traditional big four are i've got his face i can't think of his name well right draw his face <laughs> I think that's fair, Roisin. Obviously, uh, Tim doesn't get to make the rules on the fly, but I think we'd all accept a lifelike portrait of this man. Question five, which 1858 textbook about the human body, so that's 30 years before the old Van Gogh cutting off his left ear, gives its name to a long-running American TV drama? Well, it is 65 years before Nadal's first title, isn't it? Uh, yes, thank goodness he's one of the traditional big four, although the <laughs> maths... It, it, even for a flourish off the cuff, is wildly out there. <laughs> Was he not pre-war? Even 65 puts you between wars, I'm afraid, Tim, to further... Uh... Oh, no, I've put myself between wars! <laughs> <laughs> I tried to do my joke. Now, John needs to drive to Chesham before it gets dark, so there's no better reason than to swiftly go through the answers to round one. Brackets general knowledge. Question one was, how many different shapes of tetramino are there in the traditional version of Tetris? The answer to that one was seven. Uh, fucking hell. Question two, and uh, we've all known this for some time. In 1888, the Dutch painter <laughs> Vincent <laughs> cut off his, he cut off his left ear, actually. It, and by left ear, I mean his left ear. But uh, as you look at it, as in his uh, famous self-portrait after the incident, it would look like his right ear. Um, that's why I thought it was a fun question. And I was wrong. Question three. The elephant has the longest gestation period of any mammal. They're massive. Question four, the best question of the round. I think the last man not in the traditional big four to win Wimbledon men's was the Australian firebrand Leighton Hewitt. Roisin, have you got a portrait of Leighton Hewitt or indeed of Goran Ivanisevic? That's no. who I got. I got Goran Ivanisevic. The year Wait, before John, I'm afraid. I've got one. Who is the man who is married to Brooke Shields? Andrea Agassi. Andrea. <laughs> I can see a little bit no. further back. But all. Hello, Drew. That's him with long hair because I couldn't remember his name. And that's him when he became bald. Tim, did you get it, by the way, Leighton Hewitt? I'm looking at a sheet of paper which says uh, Leighton Hewitt. And underneath, it says Grey's Anatomy, which is the answer to question five. Which 1858 textbook about the human body has become the name of a TV show? Grey's Anatomy, that's actually the spelling of the textbook. By the time it made it to the TV show, it had changed to grey with an E. What an unbelievably tedious fact, but it's important that I get in there before the commenters do. Did you notice that I crossed out elephant and wrote blue whale? I did see that, Tim, but I didn't want to rain on your Leighton Hewitt and Grey's Anatomy parade too quickly. And my seven parade, to be fair. <laughs> yes, it's, it's a busy parade. And you drew only, them. Only a hint of that, and he's drawn the tetraminos. How many have you got out of five John Robbins? Uh, I've got three. I also drew the Tetraminos, but alas, I only drew five of them. Tim, I think we've already deduced that you got four. Four indeed. And Roisin. Three. Three. So it's pretty tightly fought stuff at the moment. It's tightly fought, but there's a leader. I'll give you that. I of think Tetraminos should be a real word. It's a really great word. It should be a food. Well, you can't say we're not doing our best to bring it into yeah, the Yeah, it's wasted in that. Wasted in that game. Well, it should be a cereal. It should be a cereal, it should be an Italian dish, it should just be something, it's there, ready, ready right. for action. I'm going to allow you one more thing it should be, and then we're going to crack on with round a two. A restaurant, a restaurant. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> what a time to be opening up a restaurant. Uh, oh, so we a weapon, a weapon. I'll go a weapon. Weapon. <laughs> weapon. No, weapons don't end in vowels. Weapons don't end in vowels is a big call. We'll leave and it there. Let's put, again, let's serve it up to the good people below the line to, to thrash that one out. Well, uh, well, the good people below the line can discuss whether or not a lasso is a weapon. Now, let's <laughs> oh, no. It's not a weapon. Well, that's what I'm saying. We're the good people above the line. We're not oh, here to discuss that. No, Sheen, you've just signed your own death this, car by half past <laughs> this is not my first time talking about vowel-ending weapons. I know I'm right. <laughs> John, you're the man who's uh, got the most imminent deadline. Would you like to move to round two, pictures of celebrities when they were younger? Oh, would I? Yes, it's often, it's often quite a fun round, this. So we're going to look at pictures of five uh, well-known faces in their less well-known phase of their life, brackets, youth. I phrase that worse and worse every week, and I'd say that's, that's really, by country mile, the worst so far. Here's our first. Let's have a look at this. Who's that? Ivo. Yes, Tim. I'm not very good at this sort of thing, so do I just do my best? Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's a, it's a do-your-best sort of vibe. I, um, I mean, I'm counting my blessings to be in the Quizmaster's chair as well, to be honest. Not this my pandemic. skill set. Next pandemic, I'm in that chair, I'm telling yeah. you. Well, if you're in the chair and you kept me along, which obviously, you know, it, it would be nice, but it's, uh, it's, it's by no means a, a, a sort of a, a tit for tat. Um, maybe no celebrities as, as as children round. No, I think if I'm in that chair, I'm paying homage to you with this round. Oh, lovely. How much of the rest of my uh, quiz mastering work do you think you'll be paying homage to? I think I'll pay homage to the whole lot, actually. It's Great. Fantastic. Yeah. Thank you very much, Tim. Well, with that uh, bonhomie thickening the air, let's move on to question two. Who's this in their younger days? I was quite pleased with uh, the air thick with Bonamy, but uh, Tim. Yes, no, I, 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 that was excellent. Well, no, it, it, don't don't go too far the other way. You just looked. Uh, well, I was still squinting at Donald Trump actually at the time. I can tell you, it's not Donald Trump. Question two is also not Donald Trump. I'm going to rule out Trump from this whole round. I think he actually has been in a previous round on this quiz. Can, can you make that question two go big so I can see that again? Yes. Let's have a closer look at that person who did they grow up to be and what did they grow up to achieve although you don't have to answer the second half of that question was it good achievements yeah I, I solid achievements a lot of wealth and a fair old helping of, of critical acclaim lots of hints been happening here happening here more Would than i'm like... used to from a quiz master if yeah honest. all right <laughs> I mean, le left ear was a pretty hefty clue. Well, that was a mistake, <laughs> which we, we... John, that that mistake wouldn't have come about if you'd taken which ear did Van Gogh cut off as the open and shut case that it is. As you've got we... to be more... You've got to be on guard, Ivo. You're going to come up against street fighters like Tim and John, and they're going to get you with, with pretend questions that they're just starting conversation. They're not your friends. Question <laughs> three is this. Who is this in their younger days? Ah, the person you... I think is is younger than that. Is that any good? <laughs> <laughs> you, you'd love me to, to get tempted in and say that they're actually older than that now, but I won't be drawn. <laughs> See, Roisin, I'm taking your notes on. That's it, Ivo. On guard. On guard. Ivo, I'm so bad at this round. I am doing my best, but I'm nowhere near these people. Well, I'm doing my best to host it, Tim. We're both struggling. <laughs> well, I'm doing my best to write Jesse Cave. So, <laughs> sit for my... Uh, it, it, it's got a whiff of the Jesse Caves about it, but again, is, is it a clue to say it's not Jesse Cave? It is. Yeah, it's a, it's a major clue. Well, oh, obviously, it's a, <laughs> seven and a half up, billion people up. later, you got the right answer. And you're not getting to Chesham if we're going through them one by one, John. Who's right right now? I don't need to get there while it's light. I do have working headlights. The, the issue is that I can't drink until I've been there and back, so I've got a, I've got a bit of a sweaty thirst on me. <laughs> I yeah, thought... But up your bum, Jono. <laughs> Cheers, mate. <laughs> I um, I knew that alcohol was a factor, John, but I thought the um, hours of daylight thing was a bit more uh, sort of light relief. It Fair made enough. it sound worse. It didn't make it sound like his transport was 
dodgy. It's true, <laughs> actually. Uh, yeah, dodgy. <laughs> no. I didn't say dodgy. <laughs> I didn't go. We've incurred the wrath of heavy boozer in need of an MOT, John Robbins. <laughs> The government um, have actually extended MOTs by uh, nine months, I think. So, um, very all right. generous. Long enough to the bloody government. Long enough to gestate a human, not long enough to gestate an elephant. Bit of information from earlier in the quiz. Work back in there. <laughs> Who is this in question four? Who's this? In once again, their, their younger days. This is hard. I think this might be the hardest one of all the questions in this round in all the quizzes we've done so far. Any clue here, Ivo? That it's hard. I've made it very clear that it's hard, Tim. So yeah. I guess the, the clue kid. is if you've got it immediately. I don't give him any clues because I've got it. Um, okay. Ivo, is there a connection between all these four? No, that would be fun, actually. Don't let them lure you in, Ivo. It always starts off as a gentle bit of chat. <laughs> <laughs> I hate when things start off with, as a gentle bit of chat. Hey, Ivo. Yes. Ha- Ivo? Yes, Tim. How's your day been? No, come on, let's have a look at question five. <laughs> Who's this? Jack D. It's, right, move it's, on. It could be Jack D, but write, write that down, Tim. Or someone else. I'm having a terrible time during this round, I must I'm say. I'm having an absolute bang belter. Tim, I'm you... Got no, I'm getting no. <laughs> You entered this round with a one-point lead, and fingers crossed you're going to be walking away from it at the very least even, Stephen. Well, I've still got to change Donald Trump to something. (laughs) Great. (laughs) Um, John. Yeah. um, Would you like to know the answers to this round and to mark accordingly? Yes, absolutely, especially because I asked if there was a connection because four of my answers fall into a similar world and one of them very much doesn't. No, I think, uh, you know, there are vague links between a couple of pairs within it, but it's... Yeah. You know. He hasn't read his answers yet, Ivo. Don't be lured. Sorry, Roisin, you're so right. Let's go through them. Roisin, you oh, said... Wait, you... If Ivo wants to get lured, let him get lured. <laughs> <laughs> If, I'm uh, not going to let him get lured. Tim. Never be afraid to let yourself be lured. <laughs> I'm tying myself to the mast like Odysseus and going through these <laughs> answers. Answer number one was Bruce Willis. Roisin, did you get that? No. Who did I you put? Steve, Steve Carell. <laughs> was that one of the ones that you were confident about? My least confident answer. Oh, well, that's all right. Then who did you put for number two? Drake. It is the wealthy and critically acclaimed Drake. Sorry for those hints. John, did you get that? No. Nope. Right. Doesn't matter about the hints then. Tim, did you get it? I mean, honestly, for number one, I put Rich more, cro- rich more Compton. <laughs> I had Neil Diamond for one. <laughs> rich more Crompton is... I it mean, is Neil... Crompton. <laughs> I mean, why? I mean, I'll tell you what. You live your life, don't you? But one of the least useful things I'll ever have done in my life is putting the R into Compton. <laughs> <laughs> Life. This is a bit of topical fun. We're meant to be keeping the R down, not putting it in. Oh, fantastic stuff. I'll tell you Thanks. what, when uh, when Dominic Raab starts talking about putting the R in Richmond Compton, <laughs> I don't know we've lost the battle. Question three. I know I'd like to have leading America in this very serious time. It would be 2016 election loser Hillary Rodham Clinton. Don't need the Rodham. That's Do who it need- is. We need the Hillary and we do need the Clinton. <laughs> so you don't need the Silverman and you don't need the Sarah. Oh, no. <laughs> How many are you on at the moment, Roisin? I've got Drake and Hillary. I've got Things those. Wow, she's, good. she's great. You're great, Rose. Thank That's, you. You are great. But did you get number four? And if so, who is Pamela it? Pamela Anderson. Pamela Anderson. Pamela Anderson. You got Pamela Anderson. That's fantastic. I had, I had Glenda Jackson. I thought they were all politicians. <laughs> ah, sorry, John. <laughs> didn't think they were all politicians, and yet still I had Nancy Pelosi. <laughs> <laughs> and number five is a politician. Jeremy Corbyn! Was. Jeremy Corbyn! Jeremy Corbyn! It is. Yeah, you're good at this round. <laughs> yes. It's like she's, yep. She's, she was born for this, and I suspect she may be in the lead as we now come to the scores. Let's go through what you've got for this round. Just this round. Tim, was it the zero as feared? It was the as feared Z, I'm afraid. <laughs> <laughs> I played five with Michael Myers. Michael, but <laughs> what a selection! I think <laughs> I'm still really buzzing from Richmond Crompton, though. I think I, I think unfortunately, 
I named my ideal dinner party. <laughs> <laughs> What's Crompton chatting to Pelosi about? I don't know, but he's got half an iron Silverman. Let's put it that way. <laughs> so, uh, John, how many did you get in that? A small fat two. Enough to overtake Key, as the saying SFT. goes. SFT. And Roisin. Was it four? four? A big four. four. She's in the lead. Now, if you're watching closely, you may have noticed that the contestants have actually changed places on the Zoom. And they've also changed places when it comes to the scores. John hasn't. He's still second, now on five. But Roisin and Tim have switched places. Tim now in last on four, the same as he had at the end of round one. And Roisin in first with seven considerably more. That being said, it was her specialist subject. Celebrities when they were younger. How will she fare <laughs> on the rather vaguer proposition of guess the decade? Now, in previous quizzes, we have done specific historical events and what year they happen in. With this, it is more, when did these household name items first get introduced? In what decade? We're going to name three per question, all from the same decade. I can really see this as the sort of round where there could be some luring going on, and I'm going to stand firm. <laughs> so this round is out of five. Uh, in each question, there will be three uh, household name sort of items, and all I want you to do is say which decade all of them first appeared. Uh, John is called Roisin on the screen and performed behind a mask of either Roger Taylor or John Deacon. It's John Deacon. Come on, man. Sorry, John. Come on. Sorry. I, I saw the Queen film on a boat. Uh, oh, I was, okay. Yeah, I was going to um, France on a ferry and we watched the Queen film. Well, do you want to know a fun fact, Tim? Just the one, please. Uh, Queen filmed the song Breakthrough, the music video on a train. And uh, just so happens I've got a framed picture of that, uh, of that train. Oh, and that, that, later. I tell you what, I'll hold my hands up. That's a fun fact. Thank you. Question one in the Guess a Decade round. In which decade did the, and there's lovely pictures of all of them, the audio cassette, the handheld calculator, and AstroTurf first get introduced? By the way, <coughs> word to the wise, it's always one decade earlier than you think. Right. Don't be lured! Don't be lured! This is luring chat. I think Tim's actually trying to be helpful there. Classic lured victim chat. <laughs> <laughs> I just keep going back. Um, Moth to a flame. So in what decade would you first expect to have come across an audio cassette, a handheld calculator, and uh, some astroturf? I'm ever so sorry, Ivan. I think you're a fantastic quiz master, but none of us asked you to repeat that one, did we? <laughs> You're right. What I'll do is I'll ask a very similar question with three different items. Question <laughs> two. In which decade would you expect to have come across sunglasses, cheeseburgers and bubble gum? I'm going to go two decades earlier this time. Two decades earlier than your guess for the previous one? Or two, two... Uh, two decades earlier than I think. I'm always trying to stay ahead of himself and his own instincts. I'm just trying to imagine... Yeah, yeah, you know, your, your Hitlers and your Roosevelts having a cheeseburger. <laughs> <laughs> Not together. <laughs> I'm going to ask you to stop doing that, Tim, and uh, concentrate on the quiz. I've been imagining that for about three rounds now. <laughs> like a stopped clock. <laughs> Question three. In what decade were paintballing, DNA profiling and CD-ROMs all introduced? Are you enjoying this round, John Robbins? Do you know what? It's a very well selected round, and I think it makes it disconcerting because you think it's easy because they're all relatively recent. If, the, if this was like the Magna Carta, the sinking of HMS Blythenshire, you'd be Not taking easy. a stab in the dark, but I've got a horrible feeling I'm wrong on each one. HMS Blythenshire was actually sunk by paintball, if that helps you. <laughs> Question four, in which decade were air conditioning? Is it in which decade was stretching? <laughs> <laughs> no, she's having a lovely stretch, but it's what she's enjoying mid-stretch, Tim. The mag. Uh, no, not, no, not that either. It's the air conditioning. Of course it is. Aircon. 
What's the mag? She's got a mag on her lap, hasn't she? Difficult to tell whether it's a fold of the dress or not. Luckily, it's irrelevant. In which decade were air conditioning, aeroplanes and teddy bears all introduced? Teddy bears and air conditioning in the same year. Are you absolutely sure? Decade. Did I say year? No, are you sure it's the same decade? Well, I've been given this information in good faith, so yes. Okay, teddy bear's pretty old. It's like they always say, teddy bear's more recent than you think, aeroplane's older than you think. Meet in the middle. Question five, the final question in this round is, in which decade were barcodes, hula hoops, and diet soda introduced? And as we can see from the picture, that's hula hoop, the uh, exercise tool. Right, I've changed my tactics. I'm going for the decade I think this one's in. <laughs> An emotional journey for Tim Key, who has learnt to trust his instincts. Or just in isolation decided they're right on this occasion. I've learnt to trust my instincts in isolation. That's, my, that's been my journey the last month. Let's get on to the answers because I'm sure they'll be problematic. Now, question one in the Guess a Decade round. In which decade were the audio cassette, AstroTurf and handheld calculator all introduced? Tim Key? 1960s. Absolutely correct. You were right not to Damn trust it. What, do you put 70s, Roche? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's what I'm talking about. Look at that. He wasn't messing with your head. He was holding your hand. Question two. In which decade were sunglasses, cheeseburgers and bubblegum introduced? The answer was Roisin. 20s. Correct. The jubilant turn of a correct answer. Tim Key's got that one wrong. John Robbins has got that one. I crossed out, twen I crossed out 30s, then wrote 20s, then crossed out 20s, then wrote 30s. Mm. Lots of different lessons being learned here. Re instincts. Question three. Paintballing, DNA profiling, CD-ROMs, all introduced in the 1980s. Yes. yes. No. It's a I thought it was late. I thought it was when we were on the later than you think. I said 90s. Nine, no, they were, they were paintballing in the 80s, Roisin. Damn it. I just bought PJ and Duncan, you know. But they, brought, they brought it over. They, um, yes. Thank you, PJ and Duncan, for all that you've done for paintballing, if not its safety requirements. Question four. <laughs> In which decade were air conditioning, aeroplanes and teddy bears all introduced? John Robbins, we'll go to you because you're not happy about the question. I'm not happy. I, I assumed that uh, teddy bears were Victorian. And what did you put? I put 1910s because air conditioning pushed me forward somehow. Should have pushed you a little bit back to 1900. I got it! Which you'd have to say is it's just about Victorian. It's Teddy Roosevelt, isn't it? He had he named Teddy Bears are named after Teddy Roosevelt. Good knowledge. He went to, he, he, they went to get him to hunt bears and then he um he he got there and they handed him like a baby bear and he was, oh my god, and they put a photo up saying Teddy's bears because he wouldn't shoot them. Right. Rings a bell, actually. That's knowledge. Roisin, uh it's lovely of you to provide us with all this bonus information, but I have to ask you what decade do you think barcodes, hula hoops and diet soda were introduced in? I would say the 50s. You'd say it right. It was the 1950s. It's been a great round for Conaty. Well, no, I've got two wrong. Oh, it's, it's been a mediocre <laughs> round for Conaty. How's it been for Tim? Uh, three rights, two wrong. Three rights, two wrong. John Robbins. Two right, three wrong. Well, at the end of round three, you may notice that John Robbins is sitting in a different position in his flat. But unfortunately, he's still sitting behind Roisin Conaty when it comes to the scores. It's a lovely bit of biz. It it's is a lovely bit, bit of biz. That's just a lovely bit of biz. We've all agreed it's a lovely bit of business. I'd like not to have to do it after every round, but I will if required. You We're also will have to explain why I am actually sitting here so I don't look like I'm just being loose. Well, it is quite loose, but it's also a charge-based issue, isn't it, John? I mean, I've that should be a song there, as well. <laughs> is it being loose or is there a problem with the call? <laughs> and you should just have that playing whenever it goes wrong. Can't I, I, can't, I can't get the four-way adapter because it's the internet's plugged into it. So I've got to sit near the plug. But congrats on the mortgage, though. That's still good news. <laughs> And at historically low rates. Fantastic. Good boy. 
Now, what we do now in the Lock-In Pub Quiz is we come to a commercial break, but we like to give the contestants, both the ones here and the ones at home, a big, fat ten-pointer to chew over during the commercial break. So this round, it's one question, but it's ten points. And that question is, what are the top ten longest-running musicals of all time in the West End? Ivo, man. So you want it's ten answers? We want ten. They don't have to be in the right order. We want ten so they're, musicals. They're still be running. Yes. Uh -huh. no. They have to be running. No, now. they can't still be running now. No, no, no. Of just of um the longest runs of all time. And they don't have to be in the right order. They don't have to be in the right order. Okay. Okay. I think I know what you're looking for. Okay. Let me just uh, check. Okay. Looking at the list. Yes, a few of them have ended. That's a clue, but I, I, it's one I'm happy to give. <laughs> Do you know a musical I really enjoy, Ivo? I don't know if you've seen it. Come on, Tim. It's not It's not on this list. I won't be guessing, though. No. Come From Away. What's Come it called? From... Come From Away. Fantastic. Who's in it? It's not about that. Um, oh, all right. It's about um, the when the planes were brought down after 9-11. Oh, the and they plane. go to Canada. They always have to yeah. the Yeah. Fantastic. What sort of thing are they singing in the middle of that? Uh, they sing songs from Les Mis. <laughs> um, Tim? Yes? We chat about this further during a promotion for Steve Martin and Martin Short's rescheduled UK tour dates. Fantastic. I love Fardo the Brain. Not an idiot. How many dates is it, Ivo? Uh, I don't know, and I don't think I have to know. Two. Two dates at the Royal Albert Hall. So one of the shortest running musicals at the West End. <laughs> All I crave is a good pub feed. Welcome back to the Lock-In Pub Quiz. Before that commercial interlude, we asked the quizzers here and you quizzers at home to name the top 10 longest running West End musicals of all time. Uh, and those 10 are, give yourself a point for each one you got right. Number one, The Big Boy, Les Mis. Yes. Number two, Phantom of the Opera. Yes. Number three, Blood Brothers. Wanker! <laughs> it, was, it wasn't going to be a popular one, but you'll only be swearing at yourself if you haven't put cats. Yes. Which is number four. Number five, Mamma Mia. Here we go again. Yes. Uh, number six, it's just called Mamma Mia. That was a flourish from me, and I won't do it again. Number six, The Lion King. Oh! Number seven, Starlight Express. Oh, my God. Now, things might be getting a bit tense here for John Robbins and the masks he's been wearing at various points during this quiz. John, have you written down, We Will Rock You? Of course I have. I can Damn tell it. you it's number 11. No, I don't, be I don't believe that that's true. It's got bumped, John. It has got bumped by Chicago, Wicked, and this is really going to hurt, The Buddy Holly Story. Oh, fuck off. It's all that. We will, we will rock, rock you. you ran for like 11 years. Is yes. Grace not there? No, if, then, if I haven't said them, they're not there. Ro Roisin, I'm going to deal with Queen, but I'm not going to deal with Greece. We're Stop. short. No, Ivo? Yes. Sorry, is Barnum not there? No. I don't actually believe you. Listen to no, me, John. No. Listen to me for the last time. 
We Will Rock You was performed 4,659 times between 2002 and 2014. The Buddy Holly Story was performed 5,140 times between 1989 and 2003. It was a close run thing, sure. But in the end, the points go to Buddy. How many points did you get in that round, Tim? Five. Roisin, how many points did you get in that round? Six. Six. And John Robbins querying the questions for the second round in a row. What did you get? My tripod's broken and I got four. <laughs> Two bits of bad news there. What are you holding your laptop up with? I'm holding my phone in my hand. Right. Let's see those scores totted up and move on swiftly to what we're going to have to hope is quite a jolly music round. Jolly Roisin music. is winning with 16. Jolly music. Kim is on jolly 12. Music. And John... This Let's feels quite around. admin heavy. Like, it feels like we're doing a job. I don't think you're don't doing know. a job, Roisin. You're answering questions and marking yourselves as we go. You're having a lovely <laughs> time. Come on. I'll we... tell you what, uh, Ivo, yes, if, you were, if you were worth your soul as a host, I think you'd be saying phrases like, keys edged ahead of Robbins. In this <laughs> <part>. <laughs> I'll tell you what, Tim. I had a phrase there or thereabouts on the tip of my tongue, and it wasn't for lack of nous that I didn't say it. It was because I thought that it might be a little bit uh, uncompassionate to our friend, last placed John. <laughs> That's what I feel like today. That's what today has been like, honestly, one of the most stressful days. And I think I should change my name by deed poll to last place John. Oh, dear. Oh. Guys, it's all change. I've just had a text from Alex to say I can take the iPad back tomorrow. That means I can drink now. What are you talking about? Oh, oh my all night. God. It's, it's all me, change. Man. Oh, hello. Should we have a little look in here? It sounds like he's got a beer fridge in his great recently remortgaged house. Oh, hello to you, my liege. My love of my life, you've hurt me. You've stolen that's, that's, my love. The whole thing is slightly undercut by the fact that it says Roisin next to you. Other than that, fair play. <laughs> oh, mate of my mate from heart of my realm. I'm, I getting love it when... of, I'm getting a new bit of cardboard, Ivo, to write my answer on. Thanks, Tim. I am aware that we'd like to wrap up just because John is now boozing doesn't mean that we don't still have. You know what? I don't want to. I don't want to wrap up at all either. I'm enjoying this evening. Oh, thanks, Tim. Oh, um, why don't we? We'll send. We'll send the others away at the end of the quiz, and we'll do a few more weapons ending in O. <laughs> that was not my favourite bit. <laughs> Torpedo. There we go. Got you. Lovely. Put a drink in him. You put a drink Lovely. in him. Lovely. Nice. <laughs> really nice. A lot of news coming in there. Roisin is a few points ahead. Tim is keeping pace to an extent. John is last, but he is now getting lashed. Objects in mirror may be closer than they appear as we He's head. last, but he's not no longer least. Uh, that's, uh, he's a, 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 he's a, last, a, but yeast. <laughs> oh, Roisin, a quick one of a similar nature. <laughs> no, thanks. <laughs> Great. <laughs> it had the rhythm of the last two. <laughs> Very concise on the words front. Oh god, I'm in such a good mood. Now you've had a great day. You've had one of your great days today, John. I tell you what, you could flip it on its head like this. I solved a hell of a lot of problems today. Round five is as ever the music round. We will be listening to the intros to some popular songs. But uh, they will not be the songs themselves. They will be approximations of those songs played by friend of the show, Michael, on his trusty, up to a point, stylophone. There are his hands. There is his weapon. Here is your first song, and we'd like the artist and the song title. <laughs> Oh, bollocks. Oh, no. I would happily say, as Quizmaster, that we've got everything we need for that one. Yeah. <laughs> we've, got more. we've got more than we need. Let's have our second song now, please, Michael. I 
I, I'd say he's a bit too good at this. Well, that's all right. Uh, do you get an extra point for the artist? You get half a point. For, no, sorry, you get one point for the artist and one point for the song. So this round's actually out of 10. Roisin, do you agree that Michael is, if anything, too good at this? No. Oh, my God, you look like you've been haunted, Roisin. What do you mean? You, you've suddenly gone all dark, and when you opened your eyes, there was just like a little glint, like a sort of Victorian ghost had got inside you. That's the real me. <laughs> As John's world gets lighter, Roisin's gets darker. You look like you're being interviewed about a sort of a trafficking ring, but don't want to give your identity. John has said that if anything, Michael is too good at this. It's both praise for the musician and, let's be honest, a bit of smack talk to intimidate his rivals. But will he be feeling so confident after number three? Take it away, Michael. will help Tim and this is how a quiz collapses. The quiz collapsed circa Van Gogh, John. No. No. Next, next, next one. Roisin has given up and we move to question four. Michael, okay. can you please play the fourth song. What's on Tim Key's mind? No matter. You know, I've been contributing fine this whole quiz. Relax, I'm just trying to get these done. Sorry, Tim. It's a different sort of tension, the musical round. And let's puncture that tension back. with what I would describe as, and this is a clue, quite a light-hearted fifth song. <laughs> An extensive performance of that huge banger. That's the end of round five. Roisin, it was a roller coaster. Um, did you get number one? Yeah, I don't know the title of the song. Oh, yeah, I do. Don't you want me, baby? I've added a baby on it. <laughs> I will give me executive decision that that's fine. Did you put the Human League? No. It's one point from a potential two. Uh, quit number two, Tim Key. Stand by me. Bye. Benny King. It was Stand By Me by Benny King. But I've been helped out slightly by Benny King flashing up in front of me there. I wondered if that had been the clue. What have you got written down on your cardboard? Marvin Gaye. Great. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the one point. The third question, and I hope that you all put either the complete right answer or nothing at all, was the You and Me song by The Wanna Dies. How did yeah. that go for everybody? Nothing. Uh, I got you and me song, but I put Boo Radley's. There we go. Nothing to dispute there. One point from a potential two. Number four. I heard Roisin singing it, but did she sing herself all the way to the answer of Take My Breath Away by uh, Eminem? I did, yes. Yes. But I, um, didn't have, I didn't have the band. That's all right. That's I've, had no, I've had no singers or bands. It's proving quite a consistent theme, this. Did you get Darude or indeed Sandstorm? No, I've, I've written... I've written dance music. <laughs> right. Whereas Tim Key got it from even the first aborted version. Oh, well, I, I think, yeah, I got it, but I, I got casualty. I thought it was casualty. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm actually quite a low scoring round when, when all of that comes in. Um, out of a potential <laughs> 10. John, what did you get? I got six. Oh, right. That's all right then. Tim? That's high. Tim got two. That is, that is low in a low scoring round. I got three. And Roisin got three. This quiz. Viewers at home may have noticed that John isn't currently in his frame, but he is actually back in the frame score-wise. 
Sing the lovely bit of business song, would you? Lovely bit of business, business being lovely. Not hearing it from Tim, though. Uh, I, I gotta say, that's a lovely bit of business. <laughs> being lovely. That's I'll tell you what's a lovely bit of business. Some alcohol, I presume. It's a uh, hop hand fallacy by Lost and Grounded. Yikes. I like a, <laughs> I like a, a Carlsberg. I'm or, back in or, my box. Again. And Tim's sort of... gone to Roisin, and Roisin's gone to Ivo. <laughs> <laughs> Me. Roisin, you've got to present the rest of the quiz now, I'm afraid. <laughs> At last. Um, I think that means it's time for Roger to come out. Oh, no. We've had the full lineup now. It's a shambles at the end of the music round. Uh, I'm, I'm now Tim. Uh, but I'm not. I'm, I'm Ivo Graham, and Tim is uh, last, I'm afraid. He is on. Let's see those scores again. 14. John has nosed his way into 17 on the music round, but Roisin is hanging on in there at the top. What's the final round? I've already told you. It's just five more general knowledge questions. How many Roche, have you not got a light in your room? A comedian as successful as you, Roche, I think the first thing I'm getting is a light. What lights? I just have mood lighting. But what if you, the mood needs to be bright? Then don't come round. <laughs> we come to the final round, and viewers at home may be able to notice that Roisin is in the dark, but Hold nobody's on. in the dark about who's winning this quiz. It's Roisin Conaty. I just open the curtains and the blinds. Well, that should do it, because it's the, it's the daytime, isn't it? <laughs> I'm thinking of marketing uh, a queen mask where you can be uh, Freddy on one day and then and Roger on the other. I'd say it's the horrible interlude where you're sort of a squash John Robbins. It's the real problem with the mask. <laughs> Our first question in this final round of general knowledge is this. To which of his six wives was oh. Henry VIII married for the longest time? He got married. He did actually, Tim, six bloody times. It was the making of him. Number two, what musical instrument can be found on the Guinness Brewery logo? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Any Guinnesses in your house at this moment in time, John? Four. Don't look at them. From memory, please. Uh, don't think I'll have to l l look back too far, I know. <laughs> um, we've lost Tim Keogh, I suspect, maybe returning with a... <coughs> I haven't looked at it. Don't worry about that. Don't it's you fucking there. dare. Unbelievable. It's there. Don't you fucking it's there. There there about. I haven't looked at it, I said. John. Disappointing that none of you were able to pop away and return back with a life-size model of Anne of Cleves, but there we go. <laughs> <laughs> Have you given away the answer again? She's one of the six options. One of the six <laughs> options. It's I don't it. know if you've, if you've given us the answer there. Have you given us the answer? Cat amongst the pigeons, Roisin. Question three. In the Lord of the Rings book, The Fellowship of the Ring, of how many people does the fellowship consist? Yes, that's as they leave Rivendell. Question four. <coughs> I love this question. Which UK train station has the most platforms? Oh, lovely. I know that one, actually. I do as well. And that's the platforms as they set out from Rivendell. <laughs> Is that including underground? Uh, John, n no. In fact, I'm going to say no. I'm not even going to say that it's necessarily a station with an underground attached to it. No, but I mean, are you including underground platforms in the question? Bugger me, mate. It's, it ain't, <laughs> think again. It ain't that station. Why are you obsessed with London? <laughs> question five. The 2017 Daily Mail cover, Never Mind Brexit, Who Won Legs It, featured an accompanying picture of which two people? And that's half a point for each. Never Mind Brexit, Who Won Legs It? A question not quite as topical as when I fired it out at a previous quiz in 2017. <laughs> That brings us to the end, and before Tim Battery dies, or one of the many other acts of God strikes, let's go through the scores. 
To which of his six wives was Henry VIII married the longest? Not Anne of Cleves. That was the shortest. Didn't like the look of her. It was the first Catherine of Aragon. Got it. Roshi's got it, which means that... You went Catherine of Aragon? I went Catherine of Aragon, baby. What incredible. What did you put, John? She's the only one I know. <laughs> uh, I went Berlin. Ah, uh, no. Aragon was, no. The, was his first, and he was married to her for quite a lot longer Long, than... Long, Pretty much all the rest of them put together, actually. Question two. What musical instrument can be found on the Guinness Brewery logo? And the answer is the harp. The harp. You, usually you ask someone. Sorry, Tim. Tim, how many people does the Fellowship consist of in the Lord of the Rings book, The Fellowship of the Ring? The, the, ask me the one before. <laughs> All right, then. Uh, <laughs> what, what instrument's on the Guinness logo? <laughs> Keyboard. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> no. I thought you were being pedantic. I didn't. No, know it was the harp. Was. It was the harp. And I got the harp, actually. Question three. In the Lord of the Rings book, The Fellowship of the Ring, of how many people does the fellowship consist? The answer is... 64. Roisin? 64. No, it's nine. Wow. Sorry, it's just, it's the gang. It's the old gang. Nine, ri nine riders for nine, uh, nine, the fellowship. <laughs> Roisin, what UK train station has the most platforms? I was very confident on this. Yes. And then there was a lot of talk and the underground I chat. I lost all yeah. my confidence, but I'm going to Paddington. It is a London station, but it's no, not Paddington. Damn it. It's not Clapham Junction. It's London Waterloo. Damn Are it. You joking? I'm not joking. Hey! <laughs> Johnny wow. JR's got the platforms. Did you? <laughs> Well, I wonder if that counts the, the underground then, Ivo. It doesn't. I can tell you from memory that the overground, I think, has 24, and I think the Clapham Junction has about 19. Have they started calling it the Clapham Junction? <laughs> oh, come on, Tim. Please. <laughs> don't, no, John, don't leave, please. Um, I'm out. No, come on. We've got to I'm do, out. We've got to do break. We've got to do Brexit later. We've <laughs> got to Preston. Uh, John. <laughs> right. Our final question, Roisin, for continuity, if you could nip the old laughter in the bud, please feel free. <laughs> <laughs> Can you nip the old laughter in the bud? <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> the fucking cheek. <laughs> The beautiful cheek. Can you nip me I'll tell you what. <laughs> I've had such a shit day. This has cheered me right up. Thank you, John. I, I wouldn't have said that at quarter to nine. <laughs> no. Quarter to nine. That is so recent, John. To be fair. <laughs> could, you, could you have picked the time a bit further back? <laughs> <laughs> We've been doing no. this for 180 <laughs> <days>. <laughs> The old laughter. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think anyone's ever asked anyone to do that ever. <laughs> it was going to close the curtain. I've got a stomach ache in such a polite way. Do you in the old laughter in the bud? Okay, I'm good. I won't go. I'll hold it in. I might have to mute myself. <laughs> <laughs> question five. The final question of what has been at times arduous and at times uh, really quite enjoyable. Pick your own ratio. Quiz. <laughs> The 2017 yeah. Daily Mail cover, never mind Brexit, who won legs it, featured an accompanying picture of which two people? Tim Key, did you have a swing at this? I had a go, yeah. Who did you put? Naomi Campbell and Stephen Merchant. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, yeah, John, did you go for anyone? Uh, yeah, I went for a couple of uh, royal-related names. It's not royals, John. Brosheen? Should we oh. say... Theresa May and um, the other one. Well, listen, you've got a point, which is more. Philip Hammond. No, it's not Philip Hammond. It's Theresa May and Nicholas Sturgeon. That's it. Oh bollocks! I thought it was Pippa and Kate Middleton. Oh, it's oh, not Pippa and I, Kate, I, I'm afraid. So I get one point, then do I? Or do I get half you get a point. half a point for that, Roisin. So, in that final round, Roisin, how many did you get? I got one, two, three. Including the half? Oh no, what, two and a half. <laughs> <laughs> I got Catherine Avega, uh, Harp, and Theresa May. It's two and a half. Goodness, I sniffed that one out. Tim? Just the one, Mrs. Wembley. 
John? <laughs> I got uh, three points. So the winner, as it has been for most of this evening, is Roisin Conaty. Congratulations, Roisin. Thanks, guys. To what I think you... it, was, uh, it was the celebrity faces. I think my eye for recognising people previously to who they are now. Roisin? Yes. Yeah. Can, I, can I take a slightly different view and yes. say that you were very strong across all the rounds? You did very yeah. well on the, the, yeah. the um, musicals School. round. Yeah. You got Catherine of Aragon. No one even thought that. You mm -hmm. were very good on the decades round. Tim's, and to be fair to him, because it's his trade, he's opted for a more comedic route. We and whilst he may well be the crowd favourite, he's not taking home any prizes. Um, thank you for watching and playing along at home, if you have. If you've enjoyed it, um, why don't you uh, feel free to donate to Nordif Robbins, our charity partner, the cost of a pint. Uh, the cost of two pints, the, the, whatever you feel free to donate, please follow us on Twitter and Instagram and tune in next week. Thank you very much to Tim Key, John Robbins, and our winner, Roisin Conaty. See you all next time. Goodbye. <laughs>